This is a video response to Nicholas de Silentio's video, um, What is Truth? Um, it's something of a critique of what he refers to as relativism. And I guess I'd like to I'd like to examine what that term is supposed to mean, relativism. Now, to back up a bit, <clears throat> I always get into a wrangle with what I call the more aggressive type of atheist, where um, where I basically say, I'm not an atheist, but I don't believe in God, and they go, what the hell are you talking about? I said, well, wait a minute. What does atheism generally mean in our society? You, I don't know if you have these in your city, but you, in my city you occasionally see um, pinups like on the telephone posts of aggressive atheists saying there is no God, why do you believe in this garbage, or whatever, this kind of thing. And uh, occasionally you get a full-size billboard, and it really irritates the religious type people, who I think see something along the lines of blasphemy in it. And I guess that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to say what you're believing is garbage. <clears throat> and I say, well, that's not my position. That's not what I want to be lumped in with. Thank you very much. Um, does atheism mean that you just don't believe in God, but don't rule the idea out? You just don't know? Or is it a positive belief that there is no God? Even that kind of doesn't necessarily hold up to truly logical scrutiny because you say, well, you're the one making the God claim. It's up to you to prove it. And I said, well, that, I'm not making any claims at all. <laughs> you know, I'm saying I'm not anything. There's, you know, the, um, <clears throat> if you're the one that's making a claim, even a negative claim, i.e., there is no God, then you've got the evidence of absence or, you know, that kind of thing. Absence of evidence. Fallacy. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that, again, that just ends up a stalemate, and rather useless stalemate, but it gets some people's minds working a little bit. Um, and so to, and, and it basically makes you ask, what do you mean by atheism? It really demands that you tighten up the language on that, and I don't think that the language is likely to be tightened up on the term atheist anytime soon, any more than it is on what is the ultimate nature of God for theists. Um, or why did God create the world? You know, questions like this. How are you going to answer these, let alone reach a consensus on it all? <clears throat> now let's look at relativism, which is a term that I'm not necessarily comfortable with, but for the sake of this video, I'm willing to go along with it. What is relativism? Okay. Relativism in my position, in my opinion, is a belief that there are no truths and no fixed points. Now I also caution here that we're stretching language to it to its limits here, trying to discuss something that discuss something that is kind of possibly absent and and indescribable. My previous video was on Syadvada, which kind of admits that there are things that are not describable um, or not effectively describable, which is a big impediment to logic, which is logos, word, words, using words to describe reality, truth, whatever you want to call it. And again, when you sort of say something is indescribable, in a sense that's a blasphemy against Western logic, because Western logic essentially implies that everything is describable. In some ways it does. <clears throat> now, my version of relativism isn't so much that there is no absolute truth um, or any absolute underlying reality out there. I've often said that whatever, whether or not I can perceive it, I assume that reality is out there because it, is, it, it seems so damnably real. I can't just pretend like it's not there. Um... <clears throat> Now that to me is kind of a an axiomatic admission that there is an external reality, or that there probably is, I'll put it that way. But again, it allows enough elasticity for you to understand that, that there may not be an absolute reality out there. 
Um, it's just to avoid nasty, um, a nasty case of painting oneself into a corner with, with one's speculations. Do you really want to have so many axioms that you've built a large epistemology or philosophy of life on that takes you 30 years to build up only to have it smashed to atoms because you made a fundamental error 30 years ago uh, that colored everything from then on in? <clears throat> that's what I'm cautioning against, basically, and I think that that's the purpose of things like Anikantavada, Syadvada, and, you know, Nayavada, and all the, basically, the all the ideas of um, what has come down to us as a Jain epistemology, or a Jain logical system. To say that it's really Jain doesn't, is not really accurate, but the, the, the tools that I use, that I've just spieled off, are more or less generally believed to belong in the Jain universe, the Jain world. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. <coughs> Nicholas de Silentio seems to imply that the relativist says there is no absolute truth. Um, I guess I could say that in certain, in, in some ways, yes, that's true. In some ways, we could be arguably a brain in a vat, or even less than a brain in a vat, just a one thing, a monad, that believes itself to be, you know, many different things, I guess. It's possible. Um, doesn't look like it, though. At least at my level of cognition, it doesn't look that way. But it may be. Um, <clears throat> I would say that the way that Nicholas de Salenco, um describes relativism is a positive belief in an absence of something. It's like atheism, you know, as I say, it's not it's not just my kind of atheism, which is a term that I apply to myself with some reluctance, in fact, a lot of reluctance, um, because I don't believe in God, but I do not have a positive conviction that there is no God or that God does not exist. I need evidence for that, and I'm not interested in stupid quibbles about burden of proof or anything like that. If you're going to say that there is no God, then you're going to have to demonstrate that to me. Um, <clears throat> if you say you don't believe in God, that's different. But if you're going to say there is no God, well, show me. Likewise, relativism. Um, is there no truth out there, no absolute truth? I might go so far as to say that there probably is, but I wouldn't really want to argue that with anybody because I don't think that it's arguable. <clears throat> there may not be any fixed point in the universe. There may not be any ultimate truth, ultimate reality. Um, but there may be as well. Now, what would you call that? Um, what would you call the position that says maybe there is ultimate truth, maybe there isn't? Um, Somebody might say that's a sophist position, and the best thing to, best way to deal with that is to hand the person who's making such a statement a double hemlock with a twist, courtesy of the state, um, <clears throat> because it it just it irritates people when you when you dance around like this, and they think that you're doing it on purpose, um, just to screw around. Socrates was killed for that reason, although he was kind of he was going somewhere with it. Whereas to, you know, from my perspective, in a sense, I'm searching for something. I don't believe something exists. I'm checking things out to see if it exists, if absolute truth exists. Socrates seemed to say that absolute truth exists, and the way Nicholas describes relativism, which I don't subscribe to that view, is that absolute truth does not exist. I would say absolute truth may exist, it may not exist. Put put it through the Syadvada ringer and you'll see. Syadvada previous video explains it. As an interesting aside, Matthew Shute left some pretty good comments, or a pretty good comment on the previous video, and pointing out uh, extremely validly that you've got to apply relativism to itself. 
you've got to apply perspectivism to itself. You've got to apply Anakantavada to itself. You've got to apply Syadvada to itself. Otherwise, you get something like dogmatic relativism. That's what, you know, it's like dogmatic atheism. There is no God. End of story. Um, it's like saying there is no fixed point. End of story. I am not saying that. I would encourage you, Nicholas, if you're watching this video, to look at the comments, or the comment, that Matthew Shoup put on my previous video. I'm always at pains to point out that Anakantavada, Syadvada, Perspectivism, all this stuff, they are tools. They are not an end in themselves. You're not trying to just disprove everything for the sake of disproving everything. That is a pratfall. <clears throat> That's a side effect of thinking that way, in my opinion. It's not an aim. Um, if you wanted to do that, yes, you could. You'd probably be missing your front teeth, though, if you went around living your life that way and getting in everyone's face trying to disprove everything that they um, have based their worldview on. <clears throat> um, and again, sure, that doesn't disprove the, the, your arguments that somebody hates your guts or is annoyed enough with you to punch you in the mouth. Um, but you know, you're, you you want, it, it, it'll illustrate the sort of level of. the level of importance that people place on, on their own personal epistemology. And this argument is subject to abuse. Read Aristophanes' The Clouds, and it's the most vicious attack on Socrates you'll ever come up with. And Socrates was not a relativist. Socrates believed in, or as, as far as I can tell, believed in objective truth that could be arrived at through reason. Um... I don't believe that, but I don't believe it doesn't exist either. Because some people, yeah, I guess a true, true relativist would say, no, there is no truth, and the only reasonable thing to do is to demolish every possible idea out there, and then you will have, you know, per Sherlock Holmes, found the truth, um, however improbable. Um, <clears throat> no, I don't think so, because that means, that it assumes that you started off with a whole list of possibilities there, and the list of possibilities when you're talking about reality is endless, I suppose. To me, if you want to call it relativism, um, then that's just a title that we put on for convenience. It doesn't really encapsulate the entire thing. You better understand that. It's not a statement that there is no absolute truth, because that's not relativism, isn't it? Is it? That's, an, that's a negative absence, or how would I, not a negative absence, that's a negative truth. You're saying that something does not exist. Simple. Two words. Prove it. Okay. Good luck with that one. Prove that absolute truth doesn't exist. Um, which is, you know, what... If I read you correctly, Nicholas, you're saying that's what relativism is. That proving that there is no absolute truth is an end in itself. No. That's, to me, these things are tools aimed at clarifying the situation and aimed at avoiding pratfalls like I said that 30 year thing when you've spent the last 30 years developing a personal philosophy or a personal point of view perspective whatever um, with a flaw at the very heart of it all um, I'm 52 and I see a lot of my co-workers at work going through what one might call the beginnings of a midlife crisis they're just asking themselves, all the way I've lived my entire life is kind of, I don't believe in it anymore. What's going on here? They stopped self-examining, I guess, or they didn't self-examine enough along the way. They thought, I have found reality, and now I'm just going to revel in it, I guess. The same way that, say, a depressive will wallow in what they believe is reality, as opposed to actually trying to learn more about it. Um, <clears throat> it's not that one has the positive conviction that there is no truth That's. it can often sound that way as I say language is starting to fail at this level um, but I think that at least from the way I use it 
Um, I use it as a tool to understand. I don't use it to make any claims about anything. Um, as I say, it sounds that way a lot of the time. And you know, you, you, you get accused of being duplicitous a lot when you think like this. As I say, this is this is one of the most fundamentally irritating um, tools that one could use, or tool set that one could use. Because you can't pin the person down who's using it. But if you're if you're using it just for your own personal enlightenment, understanding, then it's not really a big deal unless you decide to walk into bars and start arguing with everybody, you know. Um, about, well, your view of reality is stupid. Then you're using it for a certain purpose. You're using it perhaps, I guess, arguably egoistically. You're doing it just to prove how stupid everybody else is, and then, by extension, the fact that you don't know anything, uh, you're now like Socrates at the Delphic Oracle, you're the wisest one because you don't believe anything, whereas everybody else believes a pile of malarkey. Um, <clears throat> that's a pratfall. The uh, Indians say that the, the ancient Indians, up to the modern Indians, in terms of Indian philosophy, they say one of the biggest stumbling blocks to true knowledge is what you gain by engaging in the search for knowledge. Uh, they're called the siddhas. They're sort of um, side effects of your search. One of the side effects of one uh, of the search uh, for absolute truth, if you're using the tools that I've laid out, Anakantavada, etc., is that you, you get really good at demolishing other people's arguments. That is a very corrupting thing. It's uh, something that I'm not immune to. Um, it is extremely tempting, and it's a real... It's like heroin to your ego if you want to show everybody how brilliant you are. But again, as the Indians say, these siddhas are ultimately dangerous. They might not harm you, but they, all, they can decisively and fatally distract you from what you're trying to accomplish by, by thinking, by seeking, by being skeptical, by examining everything. Um... Which is why it's kind of hard to argue with um, a soft relativistic position or a relativistic position that is has a relativistic view of itself or a qualified view of itself. I guess qualified is, makes more sense. Qualified, a view of reality that takes a qualified position, you should have a qualified position on that view as well. You're not just saying that there is no absolute truth. There is only qualified absolute truth because then you've stated an absolute truth. Um, that's not what this is about, if you ask me. Very long-winded clarification of something, and you know, I'm surprised, I'll be surprised if anyone makes it this far into this video, because I keep saying the same thing over and over again. But as I said, language starts to fail, and you often have to sound like a parrot. You know, you're saying the same thing, or you're saying the same, the same, putting out the same message in a zillion different ways.